Hello, 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 and what is going on, everybody? It is a master of the TDS, and I'm joined by my lovely wife. Riding Raven. And we're back for another episode of Psycho Synopsis. Yes, we are. The segment where we summarize all the Psycho for you. Three main topics from the last week, all summarized into one video for you to enjoy and consume at your leisure. You're welcome. So let's get into it. And you think you can beat me? I am Kang! Forward to Time Index 3.2. A dropping surveillance tape where it appears Jabari is pursuing majors. Manual control. And then the Time disturbance in progress. Council of Kangs, have you come to gloat, to mock my imprisonment at the hands of these primitives? Jonathan Majors, a rising Hollywood star, was found guilty of assault and harassment for attacking his girlfriend in a car in Manhattan. Marvel Studios subsequently parted ways with the actor, impacting his career and potentially leading to a jail sentence of just under a year. Yeah, that happened. So, let's clarify one thing. So, I don't think he's going to end up in jail. Probably not. He was only found guilty of two out of four charges. And honestly, there are some people who are saying that he's just innocent. You're right. People have said that he's innocent, and there's reasons for that. One of the reasons is because of the video that shows him being chased by the person he supposedly assaulted. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the biggest things in this case, that they're making a case that, oh, he's black and that's the problem. I don't think that's what it is. Wait, what? I didn't hear that part. Yeah, they're basically, his lawyer is trying to say that because he's black, he's going to be persecuted more. I'm not saying that can't be a factor, but in my opinion, what I think the factor was is that a lot of text messages came out and a lot of audio came out that made him look really bad. I mean, those can be doctored, but it takes a lot of work to make fake things of those. Text messages and the, the recordings made it seem like he basically was trying to ask her to be like Michelle Obama and whatever, and that he like is made note of himself as like a prominent like a person in the black community. And he also mentioned that he that if she went to uh, the hospital, he'd get in trouble. So if he might as well just off himself if she did, it didn't paint a good picture of his behavior off screen. Yeah, it made him sound very manipulative and controlling, which, given the rest of the behavior of his that I have seen, doesn't really line up. It made him look really bad. Mm -hmm. And because it made him look really bad, that's probably one of the most prominent reasons why he was actually convicted of two of the charges. Probably, yeah. We don't know this for a fact, mind you. Uh, there's obviously, you know, we have to recognize there is a racial aspect to it, and it could definitely play a role. But that's just my opinion. I think it was more based off of how they painted him with those pieces of evidence because it, it, it doesn't paint a good picture of him. They kind of held him up as like this, oh, he's like the best. Remember they were at the red carpet like singing his praises. Yeah, weren't people saying he was the best part of the movie? Yeah, and I'll be fair, I didn't really like him as Kang. No, he doesn't look like Kang at all. I mean, I guess he acts well for Kang. He doesn't look a thing like Kane. Yeah, that's fair. And they should have introduced Kang at the end of Endgame. Yeah. Oh, it bugs me so much that they didn't. Because Kang, because Kang's whole character is disliking when people disrupt his timeline. So when there's time travel introduced in the MCU, you think, oh, Kang's going to show up. And they didn't do that. And it bugs me. It bugs me, too, because I think that if they had set up for something afterwards, it would have actually carried on the MCU a little bit further. I think that their writing would have suffered regardless. Probably. But if they had set it up, because the thing is, Endgame kind of ended, and then, like, they didn't set up anything to kind of afterwards. There were just a couple loose ends, maybe, but there was nothing, like, no big bad introduced, no nothing. No, it should have been Kang introduced at the very end of Endgame, which would have... 
allowed for a, a smooth continuation of the MCU and really kept people invested. Yeah. I mean, it would have kept me invested if I had known that Kang was going to be the next big bad. The fifth Avengers movie is called or was called the Kang Dynasty. Not anymore. Yeah, because unfortunately that they've cut ties with him. They haven't, I think, made an official statement on that yet. I don't know why, but he's done. So they've now changed the name. I don't know if they're going to go forward with Kang or not. They had already, there have been talks or rumors about them going forward with Doctor Doom, which would be cool, I guess, to see if they do an accurate version, but I doubt they will. We're never going to get an accurate version of Doom, not after 2004. Yeah, I think the 2004 one was, was more accurate, the most accurate we're going to get. But uh, yeah, I agree. But we're going to have to see how this plays out. Uh, if he is innocent and it turns out that, you know, these are false claims, obviously we'll report on that. But for now, it doesn't paint a good picture of him. No, it does not. Yeah. So for now, his time's run out. But, um. Oh. Did you think you were the only kid superhero in the world? I'm 23. Oh, I know. I've been reading up on you. What do you want? We're putting together a tape. I know what you want it. Please? Hell no! To the no, no, no! Marvel Studios is rumored to be developing a Young Avengers movie instead of a Disney Plus series, with hints from the Marvels and insider reports suggesting a preference for theatrical presentations of significant events. Details about the team's full lineup are still unknown. But as you can see from this image we have on screen, this is the speculated team that will be put together. And it looks terrible. The Young Avengers comic book was actually quite good. I have read that comic book. It was actually done well. I'm not a real big fan of any of these MCU variants of the characters, just simply because they didn't give me a reason to care about them. Yeah, and also they have whoever made this has has Wiccan in the lineup, one of Scarlet Witch's sons. So they seem to forget about her other son, and uh, Wiccan's not supposed to exist. So, well, apparently he did in the in Wandavision, and I've heard that he's going to appear in the Agatha series, which they've changed the name of for like the fifteenth time. Of course they have. She's supposed to be an old woman, you know. Now. I actually want to throw something out there. I actually think there was a way they could have done this correctly. How? With all the controversy around Jonathan Majors right now, one of the things, and this is spoilers for anybody who hasn't read the Young Avengers comics, if you haven't, I would recommend you go do so because they're actually quite decent. But spoilers for that. There is a character called Iron Lad in it. It turns out that he is a very young version of Kang the Conqueror. And given the controversy around Jonathan Majors, if you really wanted to go this direction with the MCU, you could potentially bring Iron Lad in and have it be some kind of ending up like a confrontation with all of them having to confront the evil version of young Kang versus the older Kang and or something like that. I don't know how they do it. I don't think they have the, the writing chops to make this work, honestly. Or the talent. Or skill, even. But if they wanted to still have Kang be the big bad, that's how I would do it. I would bring Iron Lad in, make it that it was the Young Avengers versus the older Kang, recast him, and then have like this young Kang introduced as well. It would be a way to kind of tie this together, because honestly, if you look at the Young Avengers and you kind of think, okay, they're going to go forward with this, aside from the Marvels... There's really no ties to this or any reason why we should care about this team. They didn't. They even had a whole show about scrolls, and not once did they reference Hulkling. I don't know if they did. I, I've heard rumors that they might have. I don't know. I don't think they did. Because isn't Hulkling like a half scroll prince? Yeah. You're, you're ruining a lot of... You're saying a lot of things. We already said spoilers. Sorry, but... Look, I'm not saying that I like everything about the Young Avengers, but I'm saying it could have worked. Now, the Young Avengers currently, the members that we would know would be a part of it would be Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, which, again, I think that she should have just been called Hawk S. It would have been a lot less confusing. Uh, we have Ms. Marvel, which, again, the actress for her, Iman Vellani, is great. She seems a lot full of life and pep, but 
I feel bad that she's kind of shoehorned into this role that obviously isn't going to do her any favors. Yeah, the character, not the actress, the character sucks. And then we also have my favorite, Iron Victim, a.k.a. Ironheart. You forgot Cassie Lang. Oh, I forgot her on purpose. I don't care. <laughs> but uh, Ironheart has a TV show that's supposed to come out, and I've heard rumors that they're pushing it back until Armor Wars comes out, because they're planning to do an Armor Wars without Tony Stark, which makes no sense, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Unless they bring him back as an AI. I just think that... They are going the wrong direction. Now, keep in mind, this is a rumor. We do not have an official announcement of this. They did hint to it very heavily in the Marvels with the end credit scenes and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it does seem like they have this in mind. But we don't have any confirmation as of yet. But it would be a very bad decision because right now, nobody has a reason to be invested in any of these characters. Nope. I mean, boy Loki, even, even if he's just a child, is still a villain. He's Loki. And who's the kid at the the kid at the far right? I don't recognize him. Maybe a young Luke Cage. I don't know. I don't, I honestly don't know. And quite frankly, I don't care. I think this is a stupid idea. And if they want a movie that will sell even less tickets than the Marvels, this is what they should do. Yep. Hi, baby boy. Talking to the fishies. You and me, son. We're different. We're special. We're connected to the land and the sea. I can't wait to introduce you to all the majestic creatures on our planet. There's always a bigger fish. Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom is poised for one of the weakest DC Cinematic Universe starts, projected at 40 to 45 million for its Christmas opening, accompanied by criticism, a modest audience response, and trailing behind the Marvels at the box office. Wah wah. Now, Aquaman 2 is always going to be terrible because of simply the, the, the word around it. It got pushed back so much, and it includes an actress, which many people do not like. There was a petition to remove her from the movie that had over 1 million signatures. Uh, actually, I believe it's 5 million at this point. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm way behind on that news. But this movie's not doing well, and a lot of people, what I think is funny is they're using this as an excuse to, like, prop up the Marvels and saying how, oh, people just don't like superhero movies and it wasn't that people hate Brie Larson or the characters and that's why that movie failed. It wasn't. Ah. Which isn't true. I don't think that the Marvels entirely failed because people hate women. Keep in mind, the majority of people who went to the movie were men. That is true. And the movie still failed. So you can't use that excuse. And, yes, there is a less interest in superhero movies because they've been done badly. For the last few years, especially. And they, the market for it has been saturated to so much over the past decade that people just want something else. So in other words, they're drowning in it. But, um, uh, but also keep in mind, James Gunn has come out and said that, you know, the, this is, doesn't matter in the DCU going forward and they're going to be rebooting it and whatever. So this is the last, like, gasp of air in a dying franchise. And again, I know some people, you know, really like this kind of universe, whatever, and that's, that's totally fine if you do. But keep in mind that this was always kind of touted as the last kind of hurrah before they were kind of, you know, shut things down. And the last movie didn't wow anybody. No, not really. I mean, Flash did terrible. Blue Beetle, they sh shot themselves in the foot before it even started. True. And they made too many jokes about tacos. They, I think they do this on purpose now, honestly. Absolutely. Because that's what they want to do. They want to get outraged so people get mad about it. But it's gotten to the point where even people who are outraged don't have an interest in going to see the movies. And I know some people still do, and that's their choice. This movie wasn't going to do well for the multiple reasons, just like the Marvels isn't going to do well for multiple reasons. And that's okay to recognize and not try to blame everything under the sun. It's okay if we have bad movies. Indeed. But they won't accept that because they need to support their mother. Oh, Ugh. God. So if you've been online at all, you might see if you post anything about uh, Amber Heard, you might have these crazy weirdos coming after you, calling her mother and whatever. Apparently, that's a term of endearment and empowerment, which makes absolutely no sense. You're you're calling a woman an a, a, a abuser. You're calling her your mother. That explains a lot about your behavior. If you're if you're calling an abuser your mother. Ouch. But 
it has been proven multiple times, and there's multiple videos on this, that a lot of these accounts are either paid PR firms or are bots. I'm not saying all of them are, but for the most part, that is true. Yes. It has been proven. You can cry and scream all you want. It's not the case. Can't deny it. I haven't seen Aquaman. I haven't really seen any of the DC movies because, quite frankly, I had no interest in them at all. I saw Man of Steel. I was like, huh, this didn't really do anything for me. Didn't you walk out of Batman v Superman? I turned it off. Oh, yeah, you didn't even see it in the theater. That one just had me so confused as soon as there started being a bat hallucination in the first 10 minutes. I was like, what the heck is going on? They expected you to, like, pay close attention to a lot of things, and I, it's funny because one of the criticisms I have of DC Comics, which is why I'm more interested in Marvel Comics, is that they don't explain things. You have to have read every single other DC comic from that line in order to understand what's going on, versus with Marvel Comics, they at least give you a slight little blurb in the beginning, which explains some key events and things that have happened since you last read. So if you're a new person, you can jump straight in. That is true. You're not wrong about that. This is not a movie people are going to jump in on. It wasn't something people were, like, jumping up and down about. It was never going to be that good. The fact that it's doing less than the Marvels speaks a lot about the franchise as a whole. It absolutely does. Perhaps you two could care to discuss what this is really about? And now it is time for the Diagnosis of the Week. Where we diagnose the week with a mental illness. Because someone has to. And we have an interesting diagnosis for you this week. Do tell. The diagnosis for this week is oppositional defiant disorder. Please explain. So oppositional defiant disorder is a childhood behavioral disorder characterized by recurrent patterns of defiant, disobedient, and hostile behavior toward authority figures. In relation to today's topic, with Jonathan Majors, the aggressive and oppositional behavior displayed in the legal case, such as the alleged assault and harassment, may align with characteristics seen in individuals with oppositional defiant disorder. With the Young Avengers movie, the resistance to feedback or guidance and a shift in plans despite potential negative outcomes could be associated with oppositional tendencies seen in oppositional defiant disorder. And with Aquaman 2, the reluctance to acknowledge shortcomings and adapt strategies despite industry norms and ex or expectations might be related to the oppositional behaviors observed in oppositional defiant disorder. It's become a thing now where these people will actually be oppositional or defiant of fans and criticism and anything like that. So keep in mind when I'm say, using this, fans are the authority, not the people in charge. Fans are the ones that keep these franchises going, and now these people are not only against the fans, but they're outright defiant. They will do things purposely to get fans angry because that's all they have. And so we're seeing it over and over and over again, and they will keep doing it because they'd rather attack us, the authority, than look inward and recognize that the problem may be coming from in-house. And until they're able to reflect on their own actions and behaviors, this will not change. So expect more of this going forward, especially in 2024, with the fact is there's going to be much less movies and shows coming out, and they will find more reasons to stir up controversy because they have to in order to keep people's attention. And that's why I feel this is a great diagnosis for this week. I agree. That is all we have for this week. Let us know what you think in the comments below and also make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe with notifications on so you do not miss your weekly therapy session. Or you will be charged. Feel free to join the channel or leave us a super thanks. Any money contributed to the channel is going to be used for the channel. And also feel free to check out all of the links in the description below. But for now, Gothic, Gothic Therapy, therapy out. out.